Welcome to Unforbidden Truth. I'm Andrew. On this week's episode, I'll be speaking with convicted Tennessee murderer Patricia Jones. In 1995, Patricia stabbed 84-year-old Alberta Coker 77 times during the commission of a robbery. She was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, plus 40 years. I talked to Patricia about her prior lengthy arrest record, the murder of Miss Coker, and an incident between herself and inmates Krista Pike and Natasha Cornett. Here's my interview with Patricia Jones. Hello, this is a free call from Patricia Jones, an inmate at the Tennessee Department of Corrections, West Tennessee State Penitentiary. Where were you born? I was born in uh, Mississippi. What's your first positive memory as a child? What's your first negative memory as a child? Uh, when I was raped by a childhood friend. I mean, by a, a family friend. Do you remember about how old you were when that happened? I think I was about 10 or something like that, around that age. Were your parents together during your childhood? Uh, my daddy died when I was four. What about your mother? Was your mother around growing up? Yes, she was. I live, I live with her. Besides the rape at 10 years old, did you suffer any childhood abuse or trauma? No, that was the only thing that happened to me as a child. Did you complete high school? No. What's the extent of your education? Uh, 10th grade. Do you have a history of alcohol or substance abuse? Yes. Uh, drugs. Crack cocaine. Crack cocaine? When did you start using crack cocaine? When did you start prostituting? Uh, around 16. From what little I could find on you, you have a lengthy arrest record. Do you remember the first time you were arrested? I was arrested when I was uh, 17 for prostitute. That was the first time I was arrested. And uh, after that, uh, it was robberies, uh, attempted robberies. Uh, stuff like that until, up until I was arrested for uh, first degree murder. Do you have any stories about being arrested? Uh, yeah. I got a charge that I'm on, uh, that uh, I'm literally on doing time for uh, with this dude that um, I beat with the club, uh, the instrument that you lock your son with. with. Because he called me a bitch because I went suck his dick for ten dollars. Let's talk about the crime you're in prison for. You're convicted of killing eighty-four year old Alberta Coker during a robbery at her residence. Can you walk me through what led up to the murder of Miss Coker? Um, we decided to go in and uh, rob her. And so uh, we went in, tied her up. And um, after we tied her up, we, uh, I stabbed her. I stabbed her first. And then um, we went through the house. I went through the house and was taking all the value and stuff. Then I was, I was high on, uh, on crack. And I thought she was trying to get to me, but she was tied up. And I stabbed her some more. And uh, I kept thinking she was trying to get to me, so I kept stabbing her. Even though uh, she was already dead, I still kept stabbing her. I robbed, I robbed her and uh, took uh, all the valuable stuff and took it and pawned it for dope. When you say we went in there... As far as I know, you're the only one convicted of this murder. Did you have a co-conspirator? I, I did, and but I did, I did most of everything, and they found my fingerprints there and my DNA there, so that's why I was convicted. I had a cut, I had a cut on my hand where I had stabbed her, and the knife had slipped, and it cut my hand open. 
fled on her. So that's how they knew I was there. So from what I understand, you confessed to the murder after Leeds went cold. Did you know Miss Coker prior to the murder? So this was a victim of opportunity. You didn't pre-plan it or anything like that. Yeah, we 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 had noticed that uh, she had stuff, and we decided to rob her. Why did you confess to the murder? It kind of got to me after I had sobered up in jail. And it, I started having nightmares that she was out to get me and stuff, that I was trying to run, but I couldn't run because she was grabbing at me, and it was getting to me. So at, after I confessed, it kind of got a little better. Hmm. Are there any other crimes you've committed that you haven't confessed to? That I have. Um, I, <laughs> I done did a lot of stuff in my days. So, probably so. I mean, I done, I done beat a lot of people, uh, killed another person that I didn't get charged with, and stuff like that. What happened with the person that you killed that you weren't charged with? Uh, she was the first person that I killed. That was the first person that I killed and got away with. Uh, she was a prostitute, and I had just robbed this trick. It was income tax time, and I had just robbed this trick of his income tax check, and she robbed me for like $700. So uh, once I caught up with her, I gave her an overdose of dope, and it killed her, and rolled her up on a rug and uh, put and put her uh, outside. Hmm. So after your confession of killing Miss Coker, you're charged and ultimately convicted, receiving a life sentence plus 40 years for the robbery and murder. How did you feel after you received a life sentence plus 40 years? It didn't hit me. At, it didn't hit me at first, but now that I've been in prison for 20 some years, it's not hit me. It didn't bother me at first. I thought it was a joke. On August 24th, 2001, you got into an altercation with convicted murderers Natasha Cornett and Krista Pike. How did all three of you end up together in the same confined space that day? I'm under the impression that prison policy is to keep maximum security inmates separate from one another. We was, but uh, somebody on the pod set a fire. And if you notice, this stuff don't burn, but it'll, it will smoke you out. And they had to get us out the building. So they ended up putting all of us in the cage together. And uh, that's how I ended up in the in the cage with uh, Christopher. So I've read some of the court transcripts. And from what I understand, Krista involved herself to protect Natasha Cornette from you. Is that true? Yes. Yes, it was. Because... I was going to, I was going to beat her to death. Yes. What all transpired with that incident? How did it come about? Um, I got into it with Tasha and I turned my back for a second on Crystal. And when I did, she came up behind me and, um, put, um, uh, Whatever around my neck and choked me until I was unconscious. But what what led up to that? What was the what was the confrontation between yourself and Natasha? It, we we had been into it. The three of us had been having words all week uh, about stuff, just different stuff that uh, was was brewing between us. We was we was all just at each other's throats. Do you remember specific things that Natasha might have said to you, you know? I don't remember I don't remember specific things. I just know that we was just constantly at each other. You know, I don't, I, I can't remember the specific. No. 
So Krista Pike was charged and convicted of attempted murder. Do you think she was really trying to take your life that day? No. And I don't know why she was the only one that was charged. Was was Natasha physical with you at all? Did she do anything to harm you? I don't know because I don't know because uh, I was after Crystal told me I was out. Uh, and when I came to, uh, the uh, guard was in the cage, uh, was in there pulling them out, and I was on the ground. That's all I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she was trying to kill me. I think she was trying to keep me from physically hurting Tasha because she knew how I was. And once I start fighting, I don't know how to stop and she know Tasha didn't have no win with me. Me and Crystal met uh, in the, when I was in and out the county jail. Uh, Crystal would have, I was coming out for dope, and she would have farmers waiting on me and candy and stuff like that for when I came in for prostitute charges. And she would make sure, make sure I had stuff while I was there until I got money put on my books. And uh, we was we was really close, real friends, and, you know, we was cool. What's your relationship like now with Natasha? Uh, I, I, I can't stand her. Are you still in the same institution as Natasha? No. I'm not allowed to be in the same institution. If you were in the same institution as her, what do you think would happen? I would kill her. What's your relationship like currently with Krista? Um, it's, it's good. It's good. I don't have no problems with Krista. Me and Krista always have been good, and me and Krista always gonna be good. I mean, she's my friend. Do you have any interesting stories from when you two were in jail? So, how do you spend your time in prison these days? Um, well, um, I basically, uh, I go to the dining hall, uh, every now and then. I don't go all the time. Uh, okay, I'm going to give you a rundown on my schedule. Um, uh, I'm up by 5.30. I'm up by 5.30. We don't get on lock until 6 o'clock. No, 6.30. We get on lock at 6, 6.30. We have to be inspection ready. When I say inspection ready, our beds have to be made. Uh, we have to be in our blues and our shoes at 8 o'clock until 4 that day. Uh, usually, uh, I'm a doorman on the pod. I, uh, I work on the pod. And then at 10.30, I go in. Uh, a lockdown, come back out at 12, and go to lunch, and lock back down at 3, and come back out at 4, 4.30, 4.45, uh, go to the line, and by 6 o'clock, I'm in bed. That's, that's my day in the penitentiary. And I'm about to get ready to start a class called group therapy. Uh, I would have to go from uh, 8 until 10 in the morning. And after that, I would have to come back and do my job on the pod. Is your job a volunteer job or do you get paid for that? I get paid for both of them. I, I'm 
Well, I only get paid up to six, for six hours a day. I only get three hours for group therapy, and I get three hours for my job. What's the hourly wage that you make? I make 34 cents an hour, which is about 40, uh, $44.88 a month. Hmm. Hmm. I would like to talk about Crystal a little bit. I hate I hate that Crystal was um, charged with uh, attempted murder on me because I know she was just trying to stop me from um, from uh, hurting Tasha. But Crystal is a good person, and I don't think she should have been charged. And which I told them that she shouldn't have been charged. But it wasn't up to me because the prison took charges out on her, and it wasn't me. But she's been a good friend and a good person for as long as I know, uh, from the time I met her in the county jail. And she's still a good friend to me. That was my interview with Patricia Jones. Thank you for listening. Another bit of infantry.